Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk about Generative AI. Now, Generative AI is a very uh, hot topic. Um, I mean, um, everyone knows what ChatGPT is about, right? So ChatGPT kind of um, popularized the concept of Generative AI. And, you know, it's not that Generative AI is something new. It's been there, you know, for the past two decades so there's a lot of work that's been going on in generative ai it's just that the chat gpd kind of made it obvious to the user the application using the generative ai right now you must be thinking that's all great generative ai generative artificial intelligence what exactly is it right i heard about is it is it a chat gpd or is it a bot is it a tool what exactly is generative ai right I mean, that's the question if you are a Salesforce engineer or if, for that matter, any, any, any person should be asking, what is generative AI, right? So generative AI, in simple terms, it refers to a class of artificial intelligence systems, right? And models, um, which is specifically designed uh, to generate new content of, of new content or data, which is quite similar to what a human might create. So. You know, for instance, right, you know, back in the days, you know, when people used to think about artificial intelligence, something like, oh, yeah, I can predict, uh, you know, my house price based on X, Y, Z, you know, input. Uh, but that's just a simple data. Maybe it's a, like three-bedroom house uh, close to city center um, a, in a capital might cost you like $1.5 million, right? So that's just a... Uh, predictive analysis that just a logistic uh, that's a regression problem right uh, which I've already talked about it in one of my previous uh, lecture if you haven't paid it if you haven't listened to that I would highly um, encourage you to check that out so that is a very basic you know understanding of what AI could do back in the days now what happened is that imagine you know you are asking an AI question is generating a human-like conversation back to you like it's like you're having a conversation with uh, uh, with another human rather than having a conversation with the machine that's the impression chat GPT gave and that's the the whole concept behind generative AI right so these systems basically right the they use <clears throat> uh, machine learning techniques to understand and mimic uh, pattern allowing them to produce normal content whether it could be a text or image or audio or any other types of information. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the key techniques, right, that generative, uh, one of the key techniques in generative artificial intelligence is, is generative modeling. Let me write it down. I know this sounds pretty, uh, pretty geeky and confusing, but uh, I'll try to explain it in a very simple way. But I believe you should know because we're talking about generative AI. And in generative modeling, right, what exactly happens is a model is trained on a data set. Data set means a group of data, right, a collection of data, to learn the underlying patterns and structure within the data, right, to understand what this data is all about. It's just like trying to understand what the data is all about, right? You give, uh, say, for instance, you give an information, you have a data set which contains this, you know, genome, genome information, right, uh, which is pretty commonly used in genome field. Uh, let's say you wanted to identify whether these genes can cause cancer. So you have a set of, uh, you know, genome from different people. So based on that, you know, the, the model can train itself and understand, oh, hey, this gene can cause cancer, something like that, right? Um, I my apologies if it's if it's a bit too geeky, but I'm just trying to just think about it in a simple way. Yeah? You're trying to train um, a model with a you know, certain set of data to understand what the data is all about, right? Now, when we talk about um, generative models, there are two kinds of models, which is very important for you guys to understand. One is GAN, which is uh, generative adversarial network okay and i'll change the color to green right for a change and because you know and other one is the variational i know it's you must be thinking there's supposed to be a basic salesforce um ai course but why are you talking about encoders well the thing is that 
if you want to talk about generative AI, you got to talk about generative modeling. If you want to talk about generative modeling, you got to talk about GANs and BASE, right? Which is the variational autoencoders. Now, I'm going to explain you a very simple way. Don't worry about it because I believe it will be very super beneficial for you to learn it, even though you think it's not. I trust me, it's very important. Okay, now G, uh, GANs, right? I'll talk it, call it as a GANs. I just missed the damn S. Uh, come on. Sorry. Um, GANs, right? Now, when we talk about GANs, right? GANs consist of two neural network. I explained to you what neural network is in the previous episode. Please watch that episode. I'm not going to explain again what neural network is here. Then we got a generator and a discriminator, right? So we got what we got here. Um, I'll just put it here, right? We got. Uh, neural networks uh, that's got two neural networks and plus we got uh, generator plus we got I'm explaining in a very very simple manner I mean it's it's way complicated this topic but I don't really want to go into the details um, but just wanted to explain in a very simple way okay so let me put this bloody uh, yeah, never mind. Sorry, the the lines are out of order. For now, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so two neural network generators and discriminator. So which are pitted against each other in a game-like fashion, right? So what that means is that generator tries to create a fake data that is similar to the real data, whereas the discriminator try to distinguish between the real and fake data. So there's kind of a competition going on, right? So using this competition, your GANs, right, this model, GANs, can produce highly realistic and convincing data, including, you know, could be video, could be image, and much more, right? So I'm going to repeat, it consists of two neural network generator discriminator, which are pitted against each other, right? And generator try to create a fake data, which is quite similar to the real data, right? And the discriminator try to distinguish between the real and fake data. Yeah. So, okay. Now we got another one. That is the variational autoencoders. I know it's a geeky name, but stay with me. They are probabilistic generator model. You know, probabilistic, which is not really, which you know, probabilistic models. They focus on encoding and decoding data. You know, like think about encoding, decoding from a layman term, like you encrypting the data and decrypting the data. For now very vague so they learn a probabilistic distribution of data which enables them to kind of generate new data samples so it's it's mostly anything to do with the probabilistic data generation so you're going to talk about the the variational autoencoder so that's why i said there are two kinds so now you must be wondering hmm, what's the actual use of this ai anyways right so like i said ChatGPT, you might have used ChatGPT, you might have known, right? ChatGPT could be used for a lots of things. Uh, if you wanted to do image generation, that you can do uh, using generative AI. Speech analysis or synthesis, that's another one. Um, data augmentation, that's another application. Um, and yeah, anomaly detection. Usually, you know, unusual pattern in the data, um, you can do that, right? Now, there is one very common thing that's very commonly referred in generative AI space, and you might have heard about that as well. That is called LLM, which is called our large language model. Okay. You might have commonly, you might have heard this term quite often. Oh, let's build our LLM. My team is building on LLM. Well, let's talk about, you know, this LLM, that LLM. Now, what is LLM, right? For most of the people, they have no clue what large language model is about. So large language model refer to, I mean, obviously, it, it's a kind of a artificial intelligence model, what we refer to as AI model, which is designed to understand and generate human language. I repeat it again. It's a kind of an AI model, which is designed to understand and generate human language. These models are built using deep learning techniques, neural networks, and they are trained on extremely massive amount of data, text data, to learn the pattern, grammar, 
semantics of a human language. Okay, so that's in nutshell what large language model. There are a lot of things, you know, the characteristics we can talk about. We have scale, we have pre-train, we have fine-tune, generated capabilities, understanding context. But I don't want to get into that, right? Because this course does not demand that much information. So just for the sake of understanding, just remember that it's a part of, it's a sort of uh, AI, it's a kind of type of AI uh, model, which is uh, usually built to design to understand and generate human language. Yeah. Now, so you must be asking, can you give an example of a large language model? Uh, you might have heard about it. It's very commonly used. You might, I'm pretty sure you might have heard about it. GPT-3, yeah? It's called Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3, okay? That is what it's called. Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3. Now, um, wait a second. Um, my spelling sucks. My apologies for that. And then we have something called BERT, B-E-R-T, which is bidirectional uh, encoder representation transformers. Yeah. You must be thinking whatever that means, right? <laughs> Presentations, my spelling, goodness sake. All right, so this is from a Google, this technology, right? Bar, a BERT, right? We call BERT, and this, uh, the, the GPT-3 is from OpenAI, right? So now they, um, this has been applied, this, um, uh, the models, right? They have been applied to wide range of neural, uh, sorry, natural language task. Um, for instance, you know, chatbots, uh, language translation, right? Sentiment analysis is one of them. Uh, text summarization, you can use this model, right? Information retrieval, and even also used in acad academic research uh, in when it comes to linguistic. So these models have been used. MIT uses it. Like I'm a alumni of MIT, so I mean, when I was doing my uni from there, there was no such thing. I didn't work on any of this stuff. So, but now they are bringing up, you know, some of the research happening in linguistic area, so which is pretty cool, right? Um, so now, yeah. So this is all I wanted to talk about. Ah, uh, yeah, one more thing. Now. Uh, there might be an ethical and uh, concern related to bias in the training data. I often talk about, right, you know, bias can kick in, right, based on the person who's training it. And sometimes what happens is that often I heard that ChatGPT sometimes plagiarized information, right, it, because it obviously uh, trained, the, you know, it's got trained on billions and billions of uh, records, which is found in the web. And it might sometimes when you ask ChatGPT a specific question, it might give you a you know right answer, but it might be a plagiarized. You cannot really use that in your research work if you are someone who wanted to write something or wanted to publish a paper. Uh, I would highly encourage you not to copy paste directly from ChatGPT because you might end up in uh, end up getting blamed for plagiar plagiar <laughs> plagiarism, right? If someone finds out that, oh, hey, my work is getting copied by someone else without even giving any kind of credit to me, so. Yeah, you just need to pay attention to that. But otherwise, I believe generative AI is an amazing piece of technology. Um, a lot of things you can do, a lot of ideas. You, you can brainstorm it. You can ask a lot of questions. Um, it's really useful to people who wanted to you know, understand certain things, and they find it a bit hard to get that information from Google. I've also heard people do say you can write code. Um, I've tried it, but it's not really very efficient, to be honest, because it often ended up in giving me response. It's not really what I was looking for. So, um, but having said that, I still believe uh, ChatGPT, like it's one of the applications of generative AI, uh, is a very interesting piece of technology, which will stay with us for a longer period of time. So in saying so, I hope you guys have an amazing um monday evening adios it's bloody raining by the way new zealand supposed to be spring 
it's been cold temperature fluctuates sometimes in spring you know temperature goes to one degree in the night interesting right i'm not talking about fahrenheit i'm talking about centigrade we don't use those american thing here yeah all right that being said have a good evening adios